Bust. Bust. Today's video, come check it out. All right, what's up everyone? Back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dead bringing you a video today on busts. I'm going to do it a little bit slower. This tutorial is really just going to show you the settings that are going to give you the smoothest print quality. That's going to give you minimal sanding and minimal post-processing to get your FDM busts looking something like this. But I only spent maybe 15 minutes sanding this thing and the settings did most of the work. Um, it came out pretty smooth. There's like I said, a couple areas I had to sand and knock down, but a quality filler primer. I'm going to touch on some of the tips and tricks that I use to get Iron Man looking so glorious here. A couple bonus things, got some LEDs in here. But first what I want to do is just talk about some of the settings, what I use that work, and I'll show you the model before I got to sanding and post-processing. Then we'll go through the whole whole process, recap at the end, and wrap it up. Let's go. First thing we're going to start with is layer height. It's no mystery, guys. The finer of a layer height that you go, the more defined and crisp the print is going to be. Irrelevant on your nozzle side, I'm running just a 0.4. Something around a 0.16 layer height is really going to be a key place to start. Really going to want to enable what's called ironing. So it's here under the top and bottom layer setting you can see ironing right here and if you're not sure what ironing is for anybody that's new to 3d printing what ironing is it's an additional pass over the model it's just the heat of the hot end going back over it so it helps kind of smoothen it out a little bit more you can go down in layer height you know at a, at a 0.2 or a 0.24 however you're going to lose some definition you can certainly go up to a 0.12 or a 0.08 it is going to add some time but i have found with a properly tuned printer uh, if all your rollers, your belts, e-steps, flow rate, everything is calibrated, including your filament, 0.16 really is a, it's an awesome place to start. You'll see in the next slide here, very little post-processing that we had to do. 0.16 with ironing is very important. Walls and top and bottom layers. This is something that a lot of people get mixed up. I'm going to try to give you the best of an analogy as I can. Your wall is basically the depth of it, okay? So it's kind of like a front to back. Uh, majority of people that I, I talk to, a lot of guys in the discourse and whatnot, it's kind of like a universal thing um, with a 0.4 nozzle, a 1.2 millimeter wall thickness with a wall line count of three is ideal. What we want to talk about is the top and bottom layer. So like I said, a lot of people, they confuse walls with top and bottom. Walls is your depth. Top and bottom is the thickness of which the filament is coming out at. So the easiest analogy that I can give you, a lot of people like printing at one millimeter or like 1.2. You will get the print done a lot faster. However, it is going to be coming out thicker. I like doing 0.6 with five top layers and five bottom layers. Doing that is basically like taking a bunch of paper and it's nice and fine, it's nice and crisp, it's all uniform. You almost can't see where one sheet of paper starts and another finishes. Doing it at, you know, one millimeter or 1.2, that would be like taking cardboard, like two or three pieces of cardboard and stacking on top of each other. Is it going to be done faster? Yes. Is it going to be a little bit more sturdy? Yes. Are you going to need as many top layers? No. Obviously, it's going to take longer with 0.6. However the model is going to be super precise, very defined. You know, you get into laying something that's one millimeter thick, all these very precise and exact defined areas around the mouth, the cheek, the ear, if that's coming out thicker, you may lose, you know, that definition, especially on smaller pieces. On bigger full-size helmets, not so much. I get it. Print net, you know, one millimeter, you're going to sand the heck out of it anyways. It doesn't matter. Get it done faster. That makes sense. But on these... You want that very thin, fine, defined layer, multiple of them. So that way you can't really see any layer lines. You can't tell where one path starts and the other ends. So that's really why that's one of the most important things here is when doing bust, I like keeping it at a 0.6. I do around four to five top layers. A 0.6 is definitely going to help you a lot, make it a lot finer, a lot thinner, and leave you with a lot less sanding. Infill is another thing um, on busts. You don't have to go crazy. Something around seven or eight uh, percent is really just fine. Um, anything below five, you're kind of pushing it. When you get into you know fifteen percent, twenty percent, you're just wasting filament. There's really no need for that. 
I like to keep my speed uh, between 50 and 60 millimeters per second, bumping down uh, certain settings like infill, supports, things like that, just to play it safe. To me, the most important thing is adjusting both your acceleration and your jerk. I've talked about this in videos in the past, and luckily the new versions of Kira, they come down tuned a little bit. Uh, the print acceleration is, you know, it's basically kind of the, the accelerated rate which the hot end moves at. So obviously turning that up, it can reduce print time. However, you're moving it at a faster rate, you know, so it's moving a lot faster. You don't want that super high because it can definitely affect print quality. You got to kind of think of it as slow and steady, more control is going to be better. Like I said, it goes hand in hand with, with jerk and jerk is basically the velocity uh, rate at which it moves at. So if you've got your acceleration and your jerk turned up and you get to one section and it prints something that's going to go, it's going to stop real quick and then zip over real fast, really abruptly. Kind of like coming up to a stop sign, you're hauling, you're doing 60, you slam on the brakes and then you floor it again and move. It's the best analogy I can give you. To me, it's a lot better to, as far as wear and tear on a car, it's better to come up nice and slow, stop to the stop sign and then go back on. Something that's more controlled at a slower, like I said, just more controlled rate is gonna be significantly better as far as print quality goes versus the hot end just abruptly being, you know, jerked and moved all over from area to area on the print. So I definitely recommend turning down that acceleration and jerk. I like keeping my jerk uh, somewhere around 10 millimeters per second or less. Uh, this is my CR10 V2. It's a dual Z. Um, so a little bit more control, a little bit more stability. So uh, leaving at 10 millimeters per second is okay. On my CR10 mini where it's just a single Z, I turn it down to eight. So it really does depend on, depend on your printer. Uh, dual Z, you can turn it up a little bit more because you've got those dual rods on each side. It's it's more sturdy, more firm, more supported. If you have something like a you know an Ender three or something that's a single Z rod, I would recommend turning that down to eight. Printing fast is great, but whenever you do things at a faster rate, you are always going to compromise the quality of the print a little bit more. So, uh, I know on this particular bust, I printed it at fifty five millimeters per second. Overall, it came out really great. Last thing I'm gonna touch on is gonna be under your travel section. I can't really talk too much about retraction distance and speed because I don't know what filament you guys are using. Realistically, you should be doing temp towers, retraction tests, calibration cubes, things like that to get those numbers dialed in. What I will say is your combing mode is very important. A combing you wanna do not in skin or you wanna do not on the outer surface. Here's why. Uh, when we do combing on, what it's gonna do when you complete a path, uh, instead of taking the shortest distance, so it would complete a path over this jaw, and it would he it would stop right here. And then, if combing was off, what it would do is just go over here and start, you know, the path, the new path. Well, what happens here is if your attraction isn't dialed in, or you've got some oozing, globbing things like that, it could obviously glob onto the print. Which it could, you know, it could cause imperfection, things like that. So by doing combing, not in skin, what it does is instead of taking this path here, it goes back over the model, and any excess filament is basically smoothed out or combed out in a sense, and it's left on the inside of the model because we selected not in skin. Uh, we don't want all that potential extra things going on the outside of the skin. And if you've ever seen things like, you know, the the oozing or the, the little blobs or the dots and things like that, that's all because the retraction probably isn't dialed in. By simply changing this to not in skin, uh, it's gonna go over the model on the inside and kind of smooth a lot of that out. So the whole point of this is to tweak these settings so we don't have to do as much sanding. So changing combing to not in skin is definitely going to help you uh, eliminate any of those blobs or zits or things like that and help keep your outer skin nice and clean and nice and defined. Uh, no matter what, you're going to have retractions uh, in the print during the print. Enabling Z hop when retracted, basically what that does is instead of dragging over the model when a retraction occurs, what it's going to do is it's going to lift the hot end up, move it, and then drop it down. So, and what that will decrease is Patterns within the model, uh, things like scaling and just overall patterns, things you have to sand. That's the whole point of these settings that I'm showing you is to do less sanding. Will it increase the print time? Yes. But when a retraction occurs, it will not just drag over there. It will lift up and move. So uh, particularly on 
this model here, uh, it limited a lot of the sanding. There was still a little bit you'll see in the next slide, but normally on these, if you don't enable Z-Hop, you'll have all kinds of patterns and lines, and it's just, it's a lot of sanding to do. It depends on positioning and your model, but if you do that Z-Hop when retracted, it'll lift the hot end up. Uh, reduce any patterns or just any imperfections that may happen from that hot and dragging over the surface. So definitely recommend doing that Z-Hop when retracted. It will definitely uh, work hand in hand with the ironing and the combing knot and skin. And you really get a nice smooth finish on a lot of the areas of your print. Everything else, guys, um, you know, supports and bed adhesion, all that, that's all going to be based on your model. That's going to be based on how it's, you know, set up on the build plate and things like that. So I'm not really going to talk about that. You kind of put all those settings together, you get a really awesome smooth finish on your print with minimal sanding. And let me show you that print right here in this next slide. All right, so really what we want to do is uh, kind of inspect the bust and see if any sanding needs to be done. We want to minimize sanding on bust, especially on this piece here. There is a lot of definition. However, it is still an FDM print and there's just going to be little areas that are going to need some, some very minor touch-ups. So you can see here that, you know, some of these uh, settings that I'm going to touch on, they really left with not a lot of sanding that you have to do on this. And this is a rock, so it really doesn't have to be perfect. Very minimal. If you wanted to, you could sand this you gotta kinda pick and choose your battles. Filler primer is gonna fill that in. You can do a very light scuff sanding on this. I recommend doing a very light coat of etching primer. Is etching primer made for plastic? No, it's actually made for metal and fiberglass, but does it promote adhesion? Absolutely. So I don't really wanna go and, and sand this um, at all. So really all I'm gonna do is, is a very, very light coat of etching primer to help grab on. If you apply it the right way, it can definitely help. Um, we never want to put it on top of fillers or putties or anything like that. Here, obviously the top of the head, we're always going to get that goofy little where it finishes print kind of thing. It really doesn't matter what setting you do when you have any sort of circular print that is going to happen. So that will have to get sanded on. But again, we have some very uh, defined, definitive features here. But we want, for the most part, the filler primer to do the work. So this is printed very clean and we really don't want to do any sanding other than on top here. So just a couple light coats of filler primer to kind of hide what PLA lines are left. I know it may look flawless, but trust me, any PLA looks good, and then once you put primer on it, you can kind of see some of those defects come out. So we want to do some very, very light sanding on this, and that's the key with bust. Really all we have is on these shoulders. So that's really the only sanding that we need to do before we apply any sort of filler primer. Again, I do like using etch primer. It is an acid. It will kind of in a sense, burn that plastic to help give the filler primer something to grab onto. Some of these thermoplastics, these PLAs, you can see that sheen there. So when there's that little bit of shine, you have to understand there's a bit of smoothness there. So just putting a primer on it may not grab, you know, all the way. So I do like using etch primer. I think it's great. You just have to put it on very, very light. Just pop these shoulders off here. Uh, just do a little bit of sanding on here, uh, probably somewhere around 160 and then 220. And then we'll get putting some etch primer and some filler primer on. Let's go. All right, so I recommend doing a light scuff sand. Obviously, some of the areas on the top of the shoulders, I did 160 and 220. The rest of the model, just a very light 220 to help knock down some of those imperfections. Uh, by doing the scuff sand, what we're gonna do is just, again, help uh, promote adhesion. That rock uh, section, the bottom base, I did not touch at all. Uh, I'm just gonna let the etching primer do all the work there. So once it's scuff sanded, grab some etching primer. Very, very light coats. Like I said, this is an acid. You do not need to cake it on. This is just to help adhere for the next layer of the filler primer. So just do a couple layers of that, uh, one to two, very light. Then we're gonna get into our filler primer. So no surprise here, I'm using Bondo filler primer. This stuff dries so quick. It is solvent-based. It is nothing like Rust-Oleum or any of the other more commonly used filler primers. Um, you know, I did about three coats of this stuff, only waiting 10 minutes in between. Completely dried out, filled in so many imperfections. No running, it just, it's the easiest filler primer in the world to use. It is so good for bust because it just dries so fast. What's awesome on this too is any of those areas where there's little lines and things like that. Um, if you've seen my razor blade trick on my Star-Lord helmet, 
Same thing, you can just take a plastic razor blade, kind of go over those grooves. It just, it dries so fast and it's so easy to sand and really is a quality product. All right, so now onto a little bit more sanding. The other great thing about Bondo Filler Primer is it sands super easy and it doesn't need an overly aggressive sandpaper to sand it out. So here all I'm using is some 400 grit sandpaper with a sanding sponge, which is very important. Uh, all these pieces here are, are curved and the sponge is gonna help contour to those surfaces. If you're doing this by hand and you're not using a sponge, uh, the pressure and kind of the weight of your hand, it can easily gouge the filler primer, which obviously we don't want. So sanding sponge, very key. But all I'm doing is kind of going through individually, making sure any imperfections that I see are knocked down, taking my time, trying to avoid some of those more detailed areas like the ears and stuff, just to get them nice and smooth. Here you can see that front chest piece, uh, very little bit of sanding done there, but it smoothed it out. After it was all sanded, now into the next slide here, I'm just showing you the last layer of filler primer. So one final layer, just to kind of smooth everything out, uh, give it that last final touch before paint. Uh, after I went through and did the final coat of filler primer and everything, I basically let it sit for about 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, I don't even think you need to wait that long, but I always like to give my models more time than less. So after these set for a little bit, it was on to black base coat. So because we're going to be using rub and buff on here, a black base is going to be the best for it. So again, I always stress very light coats, nothing too heavy, um, you know, just kind of going around, just adequately applying it in different positions. Uh, you can see I stole some of Darkwing Z's pencils to kind of get those pieces propped up. But again, very light. If you're doing multiple coats, um, just probably wait 20, 30 minutes in between coats. Uh, I used a satin paint, so it cures a little bit, dries a little bit faster. But I got my Wagner uh, paint tent set up here, so it's kind of sucking all that debris out after everything sat for about three hours uh, was when I handled it so that's really what took the longest but you can see here these pieces really do look great you know there's a couple areas where you might be able to tell you know a few PLA lines but I didn't want to push it and risk compromising the integrity of the piece um, I think all of these pieces look really awesome for it being an FDM print this I didn't sand at all this this piece came out awesome this is the base the rock and uh, yeah, it, it, it came out awesome, no sanding whatsoever. Chest piece, I was super happy with. Any of those imperfections all kind of just, you know, were minimal and I was able to knock them down with just sanding them. And the filler primer did a lot of the work. Again, it's just kind of having that attention to detail, that eye for detail and knowing where to sand, when to sand and not get too aggressive with it. The face, same thing. There was a couple areas where I could have went a little bit more aggressive, but you'll see in the next slide here how that rub and buff just kind of masks everything and just makes it look so cool give it that nice antique look so everything came out really great so now let's get on to doing some rub and buff and now on to rub and buff so if you've never used rub and buff it's really great for busts and just giving items that antique look. I've used it on numerous different things from helmets to blasters and props, and it really works awesome. It's more or less pressure applied, so all done by hand with a microfiber and obviously wear some gloves, but I'm just going through doing each one. I did the base silver and then the top of the Iron Man bust here, the shoulders, the chest, and the helmet. I did that all gold. Uh, a little goes a long way. I have several videos on this product, so if you need a more in-depth tutorial, don't be afraid to kind of browse through the channel or drop me a comment and I can easily link you to the video that I have on the installation of this but very cool because it dries almost instantaneously you just kind of blend it in and give it a go and you start giving it that age uh -oh. all right well sorry guys duty calls all right back at it here so like I said uh, rub and buff really it gives that age look. So if you're trying to give it that tarnish weathered kind of age look, it really is great. I think it looks absolutely awesome on bust. Uh, you'll see here finished product. Just, it's just, just a cool antique look. And then skipping over here with the LEDs in, this thing just looks awesome. So enjoy these last few shots here and we'll wrap everything up at the end. All right, everyone, well, that's it. That is a wrap on busts. Hopefully, the settings, a bit of sanding, the post-processing, the painting gave you a glimpse on what I do to get my bust looking. Something like this. Really came out great, really smooth. Like I said, I spent maybe 15, 20 minutes tops on sanding this. All those print settings, they really kind of come together, just leave you with minimal sanding. Uh, like I said, between the print settings, 
uh, the products that I used for post processing. This was basically done in a day. I mean, it was a couple hours. It was dry time was really uh, on the satin base coat was the longest. Again, I'm a little OCD. I always recommend, you know, give your model more time to dry than less. And yeah, I'm always adding goofy lights and stuff to mine, but um, I think it came out pretty cool. Uh, if you think it was cool, if you like the build, go ahead and give me a thumbs up or drop me a comment. Uh, let me know what you think. Love to hear your guys' feedback. And of course, if you have any questions on anything, try to be very specific for you guys. Try to give you guys some insight on what I do. Uh, your comments are always great. I love people saying, hey, that looks awesome. So comments that you guys give me motivate me to make these videos for you. Although I may not be getting 20, 30,000 views, I know they are helping and they can be applied to many other builds. And that's why I do videos like this. So I hope you guys like this video. If you did, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Again, any questions, any comments, any feedback, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section and I will be sure to answer or thumbs up or heart any comments you guys have. If you're a subscriber to the channel, thank you so much. Again, thank you and congratulations to everyone that was involved in that subscriber giveaway. Thomas Hendricks, Mr. Mordo85, and Julian Ruan. I, I, I think I said his name right. Congratulations on winning. Um, hope you guys enjoy those files. Feel free to, once you get those printed, uh, drop some pics on the Discord or drop me a comment on the video. Let me know what you guys made. Let me know that uh, Big Fred took care of you. I'm going to be doing a lot more with him. So thank all you guys for not only being subscribers, uh, but being involved in the contest. Uh, we have many, many more of those coming in the future. So if you're not a subscriber and you like what you're seeing and you want a chance to win free stuff, go ahead and click that subscribe button. That's pretty much it for now, guys. Again, thank you guys so much for being a part of this channel. I'm really just grateful to have you guys a part of this channel and to keep pumping out stuff, trying to help you guys out, the feedback. The criticism, the comments, it's all much appreciated. So thank you guys so much. Really appreciate you guys watching this video. So with all that said, until next time, DW out. Later.